We are I. This morning, I can't help but think of these two concepts that, you know, keep running through my mind. You know, one of them is uh, Jocko Willink, how he says, you know, earn your sunrise. You know, and I look outside this morning at, you know, five o'clock and I've been up since 345. And, you know, I love this time of year because the, it, this, the sky is already starting to be able to lighten up. And you know that the, the day is slightly ahead of you the birds are chirping and that's what I love about sleeping at the window open is that you're around 3 30 in the morning right now when it's a nice warm day or when it's going to be a nice warm day those birds start chirping and I love it love waking up that way so you have Jocko Willing talking about you know earning your sunrise and then you have Dr. Jordan Peterson talking about you know basically and this is not verbatim this is you know like my take on it is earning your right to be tired. You know, having enough to do in a day where you are authentically tired. You know, so I was thinking about this last night, you know, as I uh, as I got my surprise phone call on, on Monday after on the previous Friday, which was the last Friday we just had, you know, confirming that, you know, the our propagation is going to be finished, you know, the next Friday, which is this coming up Friday, and we'll plant on, on Saturday. And then I get a call on Monday saying, hey, like your propagation's finished. They're already hardened and everything. You know, like hardening is when you take these little plants out of the greenhouse and you put them outside for a few days so they have a chance to acclimate to non-perfect conditions. Cold, hot, blah, 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 blah. Just allows the plant to be more vigorous when it gets into the, uh, into the field. But so it threw me for a little bit of a loop. So things had to be expedited a little bit and, you know, a lot of phone calls had to be made to try to, you know, get the wheels turning. And it just so happened to turn out that it couldn't, but, you know, it, it brought up the priority of doing, you know, some things. So yesterday after getting up at 3.30 in the morning and, you know, one of the sponsors of the project saying, you know, like, hey, you can come pick up these water tanks tonight uh, if you want, but like nobody can help you. And I'm like, oh, Okay. I'm like, fair enough. He's like, we'll have a tractor ready for you. We'll have a truck ready for you. And we'll have a trailer ready for you. We'll have the tie downs ready for you. But like, if you need them tonight, like nobody can help you. And he's like, we're booked the rest of the week. And I was like, fuck. Okay, fair enough. So then there's me, you know, saying, okay, like, obviously, I can't do this shit till 730 at night. And I'm like, fair enough. And I've never really, I've never, I've never pulled off something like this before. However, I've done this in similar situations hundreds of times. So I'm banking on that knowledge and that expertise, knowing that I've never operated this piece of equipment before. And I've never really loaded something this big is like, these are 2,200 gallon tanks two of them and then one that's a thousand gallons like these are big fucking tanks and so I'm like okay and I know that I don't have the right equipment necessarily like used properly it can pull off the job you know but not necessarily the best piece of equipment for it so I'm like okay so I go down there and I get organized and you know it's like 7 30 7 45 at night and you know I'm doing a quick little search online about some you know information that I need and you know I go back into this knowledge bank of these these you know assets that I've accumulated over all this time and you know so I get the forks underneath and these forks are about a third of the length of the entire diameter of this tank so now I'm worried about puncturing holes in the bottom of this tank with these forks there's no extensions for these forks you know, so I get this tie down to be able to, you know, belly wrap this thing and tie it to the actual front end loader, you know, and I'm trying to tie it up high. So maybe I can, you know, 
arch back a little bit, take some of the pressure off the toe end of the forks. I'm like, okay. But the problem is the back of this, you know, bucket on this front end loader is not very high. So I have nothing high to attach you to keep this strap up. Even if somebody was on the opposite end holding for you, as you're tightening it down, it's naturally going to slip down the backside. So I'm like, okay, do your best. Not only that is I have to drive through a field that the last time somebody drew drove through it, it was muddy, the tractor. So now you have like these, you know, 12 inch deep wheel wells that you're bouncing through. So you're bouncing through these because you have to drive down them parallel till you get to the truck and the trailer and then you have to go across them horizontally. Now, this is fucked up. So like anybody who's been in a situation like this before knows that like this sucks and there's really not necessarily anywhere else I could have parked this truck. In hindsight, now looking back on, there's another place where I could have made it slightly easier on myself. But when you're going perpendicular to these wheel wells and you're trying to load something onto the truck, what happens is because how close these wheel wells were to the to the trailer is that when I would pull up to the trailer, the front end would dip. So you don't want obviously the bucket to hit or the tank to hit the trailer. You also don't want the bucket or the tank too high. Because then you become too top heavy with something that's so big and you know that you're going to dip and bounce forward. But when you're pulling in and out, you're rocking back and forth and it's digging the toe of those forks into the bottom of this tank. You're like, fuck. It's like this whole perfect storm of all this shit that could have like happened to make this so interesting. So I get all three of these loaded onto this trailer. You know, eventually it took me about 45 minutes to be able to get them all three of them loaded onto this trailer. So then I'm driving down to the site where, you know, the pumpkin patch is going to be knowing I have no way of unloading these tanks, but knowing in my mind, like there's no way that I can't physically figure out a way using this, this other tool that I have, which is my body and this other tool, which I have, which was my mind, and this other tool that I have, which is the willingness to want to do this. So I pull up on site and I have the confidence that I know that I can physically figure out a way to be able to get these tanks off this trailer. So I'm like, okay, if I push these, so, you know, going to the gym regularly, have the physical strength. If I push these tanks until they're about 50, 52, 53% off the edge, they will become light and I can use the edge of this trailer because it's a flat deck trailer. There's a fulcrum point. And I'm like, okay, if I use that, I can slowly stop off. And all I have to do is just accept some of this weight because I don't want them crashing off. And I just need to get, you know, the heel end of this tank on the ground. And then I can try to spin it off or even if I tilt it on its side from there at least it's not falling the you know three three and a half feet from the edge of the trailer so I push this one tank I get off slides off and as I'm getting it to the edge I start to think I'm just like this is one of those moments where I could get crushed underneath this tank there's nobody else around I'm in the middle of a field that's surrounded by trees and Shit could go sideways really fast. But then at the same time I have this thought, it just vanishes. So I'm like, okay, well, obviously my intuition is picking up on here that everything's going to be okay. So I get to the edge and I slowly start to work this thing off the edge. And it's just, you can feel the weight of this tank being put on you. And you're like, okay, again, all I need to do is be able to slow this thing from falling off. And you know, now I'm just leaning my whole body into trying to do this controlled fall, this controlled descent. Bang, happens without hitch. Do the other one, spin the other one, get all three of them off. I'm like pushing these tanks, just using my legs. Think about all the time that I've pushed this weight sled in the gym, different angles, running into it slightly, putting a shoulder into it, thinking about all the times that I played football, trying to line up all the ends of these, you know, nozzles so that they're all kind of aiming in the same direction, putting them in, you know, biggest to smallest in the order that I think that they should go in, knowing the ground's not level, but I can level it with some, you know, some shims afterwards. Like, that's not a big deal. 
And I get all three of these tanks off this trailer and I see this empty trailer and this empty truck sitting there. And I was like, huh. I'm like, I wonder how many people would have been defeated knowing that they didn't have any way of getting those tanks off that they would have just physically decided to remove them themselves. Like, I wonder how much like that would have been a barrier for most people. And again, as I'm getting all this coverage, I'm getting the gate back up. I'm driving back to the farm to drop off this truck, this trailer at the sponsor's house who donated these tanks. I'm getting back in my car and I'm, you know, backing up this trailer. It's a, you know, 16 foot trailer. And I'm trying to turn this thing around in a truck that's like in this area that would be tough for most people to turn a car around in. I get all nicely nestled in there. I get the gate all closed. I'm driving back and it's like 9.45 at night. And I was like, hmm. I'm like, interesting. Whereas I'm like, it wasn't, it wasn't that long ago that I woke up and I'm like, maybe it was. So I'm like, I feel really fucking good right now. I feel tired. I feel a little bagged. Like obviously I'm starting to hit that wall. But I'm like, okay, if it's, 1045. I'm like, huh? I'm like, that's a lot of hours ago. A lot of hours. So I'm like, if I got by 345, I'm like, that's like 20 hours ago. And I started thinking, I'm like, man, I really earned going to bed tonight. And then that's when that thought popped in my mind to Dr. Jordan Peterson. And I'm like, like, I've earned the right to go to sleep and have a good sleep tonight. And knowing that I'm going to get up at 3.45, 4 o'clock the next morning. So I got my first meeting at 6. But then I start to think about Jocko Willink talking about earning your sunrise. And I'm like, okay, well, I would never be able to earn this sleep and then earn the next sunrise if I didn't prioritize my nutrition. And I look back at what I ate that day. I had my... My breakfast, like, you know, eight pieces of bacon, six eggs, you know, four or five tablespoons of coconut oil, a couple tablespoons of honey. Great. Had some chicken wings, like 12 chicken wings in the middle of the day. Definitely not the best. A little bit of um, barbecue sauce on about four of those. A little bit of sweet Thai chili sauce on a few of those, only because there was no other options and I was starving. And for dinner, I had about, you know, 18 ounces, 16 ounces of steak. And a little bit of dark chocolate. That that's what I ate. And I think, you know, between that and sitting in the sauna, sitting in the ice bath, working out all the time. Like this is what gives me these resources to be able to pull these things off. And this is what makes me happy. This is what I feel like the real true human potential is for all of us. I don't think that anybody is extraordinary. Nobody. I don't think when it comes to figuring out and solving problems, I don't whether that's physically, intellectually, spiritually, I think everybody's on the same level playing field. But it's how much you exercise those tools. It's how much you exercise those tools to give yourself the right to be able to, at the end of the day, like I am fucking exhausted on all fronts. Not that you're just mentally exhausted because you sat in front of a computer all day. Not that you're just physically exhausted because you swung hammers all day. You know, not that you're just spiritually exhausted because you got into these situations that just didn't feel quite right to your soul. But when you have a combination of all those things in a day, you earn that right to be able to go to sleep. And you've given yourself the proper resources all day long to be able to do that. You know, environmental hormesis, hot and cold exposure, simply just used to being outside, you know, creating those avenues, eating healthy, nutritious food off the land. Like that just used to be a given because there was nothing else until, you know, the last 60, 70 years. And then getting up the next day, happy, proud to be able to get up, earning that sunrise, looking out outside right now and like as much as I'm just connecting with these words and these po- this podcast right now. It's like, I also can't wait to end it because I see how beautiful it is outside and knowing that it's quarter after five, it's like, I can't wait to go start that meeting at six because I did earn this day and I 
got my eight ounce steak that I'm ready to eat, you know, right after this meeting because I know I'm going to be hungry because I'm hungry already. And right before I go eat my breakfast, you know, around like 9 30, 10 o'clock this morning, probably 10 o'clock. But I can't wait. Right? And I feel like this is what it's like to be able to, to live life. You know, when I glorify all this once was, this is what I think. Because again, everything that I did yesterday is not outside of the extraordinary. And I only highlight this tiny little snippet at night because, you know, it was mentally and physically taxing at a point in time when most people probably would just be scrolling through Netflix or social media feeds. And I'm like wanting to get out there and go do this. Like I want to be faced with this challenge and this task to see if I can overcome it or see how fucking sideways it goes to see what I can learn for next time. I feel like this is what, this is all of our potentials to do all of these things every single day. But it depends on really how much you stack the cards in your favor, whether or not you've lived enough life to be able to have the life experience to be able to fall back on that. So at a future time, you have resources and knowledge to overcome a problem. And then if you physically tax yourself enough that you actually have the, the physical strength maybe to be able to come over or overcome one of these challenging moments where you need to tap into that. And the one thing that I realized when you are combining knowledge and experience with physical strength, there's something about that moment that is just pure bliss. <laughs> 